My son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got, the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot, and the people left behind okay. there were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking like about Hunter? Hell. Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. You're talking about I don't about know. I don't know, Bo. I know Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know, got Bo. Thrown, Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. It wasn't dishonorably. cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of that vice president, true. he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow, that is simply and various not other places. True. He my made son, a fortune. Gentlemen, my son. And he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why was he given tens son. of millions right. of dollars? But he wasn't given right. tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, that's uh, totally, that's totally discredited. You've already, this, we've already been through. Totally we've already discredited. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Well, the good news is Mr. Biden has challenged Mr. Trump on a debate. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. Since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Yeah. I'm surprised too. Everybody's surprised. Everybody's shocked. But it comes with some parameters. All right. There'll be no audience because we know Mr. Biden is scared of the audience. And there's going to be some cutoff mics. So they didn't want Mr. Biden to rumble on and on and on without landing the plane. So Mr. Trump is going to be able to cut him off. <laughs> and it's funny. It's going to be in the studios, and I think both of them is going to be here in Georgia, in Atlanta, CNN Studios. I'm surprised, but we know how this is going to happen, right? All the long pauses that Mr. Biden does, they're going to edit that out. Imagine what we can do next. Four more years. Pause. Four more years. Pause. Four more years. Because there's, no, there's not going to be no audience there to be witness to what's going on. So every flub, every a fib, they're going to just edit it out. To get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to... Anyway. I, I, we're going to get a lot done. If he poops on himself, they're just going to edit that out. So that's why they want the audience. And we know that Mr. Biden is scared of the big, large audience. It's proof that despite the naysayers, we can make meaningful progress on dealing with gun violence. Be make no mistake. Sit down, you'll hear what I have to say. You think? You. Okay, so that's that. And I personally can't wait to see that train wreck. You Who shut is up, man. Listen, are you I'm, in favor of law and order? I'm in favor of law. You follow you in favor of law and order? Go yes, I'm in favor. You ask a question, let him finish. Law and order. Law and order. Let him protect Mr. people. President, I'm the moderator of this debate, and I would like you to let me ask my question, and then you can answer. First of all, I guess I'm debating you, not him, but that's okay. I'm not surprised. The fact is that everything he's saying so far is simply a lie. I'm not here to call out his lies. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just want to make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, 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 I want to make sure. You graduated last in your class, I, not I, first in your I, class. God. I want to make Mr. sure. Mr. President, can you let him finish, sir? No, he doesn't know how to do that. Gentlemen, I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but I see it seems to be. Why should I be different than the two of you? We all see what's 
going to New York trial. That hush money case, that shit's over. It's cooked. It's done. But it's still New York. If these, uh, if the jury finds Trump guilty, we all will see this is a farce because everybody, including Anderson Cooper, believe that Michael Cohen was lying. Having just witnessed that piece of cross-examination, do you have doubts that that conversation happened the way Michael Cohen testified on his direct examination? That he I, called I think Trump and I think it's de- absolutely, absolutely. Huh. I think it's devastating. I mean, for Michael Cohen's credibility on this. I mean, in this one particular topic, whether it's you know he just didn't. I mean, it's it's hard to. I don't know. Yes, I, I think a, a, if I was a juror in this case watching that, I would think this guy's making this up as he's going along or, or he's making the, this particular story up you know todd blanche was pointing out you were testifying just on tuesday in this court um you know and all all morning long he's been pointing out you know inconsistencies uh in in michael Cohen's testimony all day cnn has been going after michael cohen they've been chopping his testimony even cnn people the one that won Trump in prison, they just can't do it anymore. They just can't do it anymore. Let's take a look at this clip. I don't think I've ever seen a star cooperating witness get his knees chopped out quite as clearly and dramatically as what just happened with Michael Cohen. I've certainly seen very effective cross-examinations of cooperating witnesses. I've seen aspects of their story cut into and called into question. But this goes to the heart of the allegation here, that phone call on October 24th. And it looks to the jury and to... Anderson Cooper and Kara Scannell and Judge George Grasso, who were all in the in the courthouse, that that was a devastating moment. Not only that, Michael Cohen's own lawyer, he comes out and said, man, he cannot sit there any longer and watch this guy lie. Oh, I swear to God, Bob, I don't have anything on Donald Trump. Who said that? Michael Cohen about 10 to 20 times. So not just once, multiple times he told you that while you were his attorney, while you were in consultation with your client, he said that multiple times. He not only said that multiple times, but he said that after I said to him, knowing that he was suicidal, Michael, think about this. Isn't it easier to cooperate against Donald Trump than it is to kill yourself? And he still said, I swear to God, Bob, I don't have anything. The worst day in court for a prosecution. The worst. You hear that, Alvin Bragg? The worst. Your star witness has been the worst. He's been a liar. He went to jail for lying, and you put this guy on the stand. And look what happened. Everybody, everybody, including Stevie Wonder, sees that this is nothing but political. And it's bad that CNN... You've got CNN in your back pocket, and they just can't do it anymore. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think the punches are building cumulatively. Uh, I think Tuesday uh, there were bruises, and today there's blood, uh, to extend the metaphor. Uh, they're not done, and this is a back-and-forth process. I was listening to your reporting, following along like everyone. I'm going back in the courtroom next. I was just speaking to our colleague Lawrence O'Donnell, who spoke to MSNBC today as well. I think the collective view is these are moments the jury will remember, and they are instilling or adding possible doubts about Michael Cohen's long-term credibility. Uh, as I think everyone knows by now has followed the trial, the question isn't has he changed his mind and retracted things. Both sides agree on that. That's not in doubt. The question is, does this guy still lie? Uh, and if he does still lie about anything, little, medium, or large, can you trust him? And the standard is not, um, okay, do we have to uh, be be convinced that he lies about everything. The standard for the jury and why, why Blanche is making some progress is, by the end of this, does the jury have reasonable doubt about Cohen telling the truth on elements of the crime? The other stuff won't ultimately matter when they deliberate, it just accrues. Um, but what we saw in that kind of dramatic back and forth as it's been described today, of, well, but you did lie and have you lied and why do you sound like this and a podcast where you might sound allegedly unhinged, all of that accrues to whether jurors go back and say, I doubt whether he's telling the truth about an element of the crime. For example, Trump's criminal intent back in 16. Um, so I think they are landing blows, Andrea. Yeah, all it takes is one, one juror with common sense in New York. 
And I pray there's one out of that 12 who sees through all this bullshit. One. And then Trump will be acquitted. But again, it's New York. So I'm still going to have to hold my breath because we seen E. Jean Carroll case where it was no case and he got, you know, she got rewarded, but he ain't go to jail. But all it takes is one. And we're still holding for hope that one New Yorker on that jury trial is going to see through this bullshit. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. All right, all right. Till next time, guys. I'll see you again. And all you liberals, get your ass off my lawn.